lot of law is just overly confusing for no reason, you guys, if I'm gonna be honest, like. Hey y'all, it's Kim with the K, come to you guys with a new video. So today's video is going to be all about what exactly does an employment lawyer do? Specifically, I'll be talking about on the plaintiff side, so the claimant or the employee side of things. A lot of these things are applicable to both sides, but my experience is in employment litigation on the plaintiff side. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. I have notes, so I will be looking down. I wanted to make sure I gave some valuable information in this video. I won't be dipping and dabbing too much into the law aspects. It's more of like the process how it works because I know a lot of you are aspiring attorneys or current attorneys or current law students so you want to know okay if I want to choose employment law what does that look like what does the day-to-day -day look like if you haven't seen any of my day in the life videos as a lawyer in a law firm definitely check those out I'll link it in the cards wherever that is do we ever know where that is as youtubers we we don't know but I'll definitely leave that information there also comment below some other areas of law you guys would like me to talk about my next video I plan on doing Probably after this one is going to be about contracts, specifically influencer agreement contracts, because that is another area I have extensive experience in, not only as a client or a talent on the on one side, as well as now an attorney. I do review some influencer agreements here and there. Lately, recently, I have been, and I absolutely love it, because if you guys don't know, I have been in this social media influencing content creating space since 2014, so I have a ton of knowledge on that. And then now add my degree as a lawyer, a licensed attorney. I definitely have the skill set to bring those two together. So I'll definitely be talking about that in an upcoming video, but stay tuned for that. So employment y'all, law y'all. So I was trying to think of a general definition. I Googled it and I got some inspiration from just the regular Google lay way of saying what employment law is. A lot of law is just overly confusing for no reason, you guys, if I'm gonna be honest, like all the legalese, the legal terms, the legal jargon, le Listen, a lot of it could be really simple. It could be said so much more simply than it is, but that's just a part of being a lawyer, knowing those terms and having to use the Latin language sometimes. But I'm going to try my best to just keep it very simple and easy for anyone to understand. So definition, employment law, it is it establishes federal and state statutes, administrative regulations, and judicial decisions regarding all areas of the employer-employee relationship. Boom, super simple. In other words, what that means is anything that happens within the workplace, there are employment laws ar around that. So whether it's a statute, a regulation, or something a judge has said in court. So they could be federal law, state law specific. It just depends on what the circumstance is. But overall, employment law is heavily fact-driven. So you have the Title VII's and the Pregnancy Discrimination Act and the ADEA and things of that nature all to help provide a minimum guideline for employers, employee relationships. However, states can come up with their own guidelines, regulations, and laws as long as they at least meet that minimum. So federal laws generally are the floor, not the ceiling. So at minimum, here are the minimum floor guidelines that you're required to follow statewide, nationwide. However, states can add on to that. So then there's additional state laws. So I don't know if that kind of helped clear something up because I know there can be some confusing, especially if you're just now getting interested in law. Maybe you're in high school or an undergrad or you just started law school and it's still not clear because trust me, I was there. I was in law school and there's still things I still don't understand. But either I got clarity looking it up myself or clarity studying for the bar exam because that's where you learn the ton or just clarity in my first year of practice so um, even now I still do a ton of research and as a licensed attorney you're required to do what's called continuing learning education credits so CLE credits so you're constantly learning and consuming information because laws do change so honestly even if you've been a lawyer for years there are still some things you have to go back to relearn or have to even confide in younger lawyers that may have just got out of law school to learn these new laws so don't ever feel like you're behind or like why well, I'm having to constantly research we all do that that's the name of the game welcome to being a lawyer um, or in welcome to your legal journey in general and there's so many different career paths that this is applicable to that I know y'all are like girl same over here medical field always changing no one knew about what's going on in the world I can't say it because you know YouTube will try to demonetize your girl but yeah so there's so many different things where you always have to be adaptable and kind of just change it up if you need to and be aware of what's going on in society and how that affects your career okay I just went off on a spiel so we're back 
All right, next, I do want to touch on a few acts, laws, areas of law, specific things that apply in the employment law setting. I don't want to go, again, into too much details about the law, and I do want to add, I know I had a disclaimer at the beginning of the video, but again, what I'm saying is only educational purposes and informative purposes. By no means am I establishing an attorney-client relationship right now. Please consult with an attorney if you ha are having any type of employment litigation issue, employment law issue, workplace issue, labor law issue, etc. Things that I may touch on in this video. This is by no means legal advice in any since, again, employment law is so fact-driven, you need to speak with a specific lawyer in your specific state. Like I said, state laws can also add additional requirements and expectations and guidelines and regulations that you may need to follow in your specific state. I am an Alabama licensed lawyer. I do plan on waving into some other states, possibly, but as of right now, I only practice in um, Alabama. So, just throwing that out there. Also, by no means am I a representation of either a prior law firm I've worked for, a current law firm I work for, or a future law firm that I work for. This is again just me speaking on behalf of educational purposes on my YouTube channel. Disclaimer over. <laughs> so areas of law. A main one is Title VII. So Title VII is the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and generally it prohibits employment discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, national origin, and as of 2020, sexual orientation, which is a big win in the employment litigation realm. Huge. We're so proud of that. So shout out to the Supreme Court, okay? Um, also, there are several other acts that we tend to deal with. So, Pregnancy Discrimination Act, Age Discrimination and Employment Act. So, ADEA is a little bit different than the Age Discrimination Act. So, ADA. There's the Section 1981, which is just specifically race discrimination. You can use those in an employment setting as well as like a pr police brutality setting. There is a difference between filing a race discrimination case under Title VII as opposed to Section 81. And the main difference, just not to try to go too legally on you, but there's a, there's a difference in damages. There's a difference in statute of limitations. There's a difference in how you go through the process to file that type of lawsuit. So, for instance, with Title VII, you have to go through the EEOC, which is the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. I will talk about that in a moment. Other areas consist of the Family Medical Leave Act, FMLA, and then now the CARES Act, which is established due to what's going on in our world right now in the medical field. So they tried to bring in another act regulation to help employees during this time who may not be applicable or may not be able to meet the FMLA requirements, but still have some type of leave of absence and help during the time of what's going on in our world. I'm trying not to say it. Okay. Enough about the legalese. Now let's get into the process. So I kind of wrote down a step-by-step -step process of how it works going through not only as an employee of what you kind of go through and the process of you leading up to reaching out to an attorney, but as well as I'll talk about the practice in itself. So let's talk about just the process in general of employment cases. Let's start, let's do some Title VII cases. So most of the cases we get, like I said, is under Title VII, and that's the prohibits employment discrimination based on race, color religion, sex, national origin, and sexual orientation. So, first thing you have to do is go through the, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Go through the EEOC. So, you have to file an EEOC charge within 180 days from the last act. So, this is where having an attorney at every step of this litigation process, you're not necessarily litigating quite yet, but and the EEOC charge is a prerequisite to you filing a complaint with the court. So you need that for specific areas of law within employment. So within an employment setting. So with that, I say reach out to an attorney if you can. Talk to an attorney. They specialize in this. We know what facts are needed. We know if this is going to be worth your time because it is a long process. So you have from the last act, which you may think is the last act and it might not be, you have 180 days from that date to file the charge. You file the charge and the EEOC has 180 days, six months, to then get back to you with your right to sue letter. So a right to sue letter, everyone gets it. It's just a general letter, right to sue letter. They'll say whether or not their investigation said yay or nay, but really the purpose as far as like an employment plaintiff's attorney setting is to get the position statement. That's, you know, that's the goal. We wanna see what does the other side say. So we file the charge, defense files a position statement through the EEOC, we're not in court yet. And then we review it, we write a rebuttal if need be, and then EEOC has time to do their internal investigation. Sometimes in this area, you can also mediate. So a, a mediation is where you basically come to a settlement agreement. 
One party makes a sacrifice, the other party makes a sacrifice, you come to an agreement, and boom. Dispute over, wash hands, not as much time consuming. And usually not as, usually, mm, it depends. I won't say whether or not you get more money because it just depends. So fact driven, all of this is, it depends. If you meet any lawyer and you ask them a question, it depends. <laughs> so that's just like a running thing. But after that, you may mediate. If not, you get your right to sue letter. Now, once you receive that letter, say you didn't reach out to an attorney, you have 90 days. That's it. 90 days to file a complaint with the court. So if you get your right to sue letter and then now you're just now trying to scope out for a lawyer, you're kind of putting yourself at a disadvantage. I'm not, again, this is not legal advice. This is just kind of what could or could not happen. So sure, you could find a lawyer right after. Sure, it may be better for you to just go to the EEOC on your own. It may be more cost effective, et cetera, et cetera. But this is just what I've seen. So 90 days and all this information can be found online go to google type in eeoc go to their website and they have all of this information on there so i'm pretty much just reciting their information and education as well as you know legalese <laughs> so you do that you meet a lawyer great y'all talk about it and then as the lawyer on my side what i'm doing is hearing you out i need to know all of the facts all the nitty-gritty the real the honest the upfront everything you can think of and i didn't even add this so also in employment, the discrimination practices could be, of course, discrimination. It could be harassment. So that could be sexual harassment, sexual assault, and a tort kind of realm. It just kind of depends. Um, it could be uh, retaliation. So, for example, if I told my manager, hey, I feel like I'm being discriminated against because of my race. They said, okay, we'll look into it. And then I get fired. That could be a retaliation based on me making a home light. Usually one... Not saying it's not enough when it comes to sexual harassment. A lot of times it's just not enough. But when it comes to other discrimination, it just is better to have a track record. That's why I think in my podcast, if you listen to that, I did with The Localist. I talked about how it's so important to just keep a kind of a diary. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just keep track of things. Like if you start to get an inkling, like, okay, something's going on at work. I feel like um, discrimination, harassment, like if you're not sure, because again, you're not a lawyer and it's okay for you to just have a little bit of concern and not be sure. But with that, just take notes. It doesn't have to be perfect notes. It has to be perfectly typed out. You can type it, write it, whatever, but that's going to help if you do end up having a, a lawsuit issue where you do need to contact a lawyer, because we're going to ask for all the information. So if you have all the facts written down, the dates, it's going to be so much better process for you as well as the lawyer. So that's just that really quick. So that's kind of the general process before you get to following the complaint. Then again, the court process, it's just long. It's, that's just what it is. Usually it's long unless you settle early on. It's a long process unless you settle. And 90, what is it, like 95% of cases or more settle. So when people are like, I need my day in court, da -da, you get your day in court. It just may not look like the TV shows because that's just not reality. Most cases settle and honestly, it's a win for everyone in the situation a lot of times. And sometimes it's not. It just also depends on how your lawyer, lawyer explains everything, your expectations and realistic expectations because a lot of times the hardest part about being an attorney which I'm going to kind of lead me into the practice area of it is telling the client like hey I understand this is what you expect but this is what the law is going to allow or hey I understand that you went through something that was traumatic or that was terrifying or that was just discouraging really especially when it comes to your workplace and here's a quick little rant but a lot of us put so much value onto our place of employment and it's a lot of times a place where we spend a lot of time. So when you get to the place where the place you work is no longer comfortable, the place you work is no longer safe. It doesn't feel like you're able to progress. You're not able to get that promotion you constantly keep applying for. And then someone else of a different race or a different gender constantly keeps getting it, et cetera. So many different scenarios, it, it's frustrating and it makes it it's difficult to focus at work if you still have your place or if you get fired or terminated or laid off or etc it just it, it's just disheartening so i understand which is why we try to tell our clients you know what you went through it i respect what you went through i hear what you're saying and i agree which is all true we i can't speak to every lawyer but it's true but we didn't go through it so we have to try our best to hear everything you say we need all the facts so that we can put ourselves essentially kind of in your shoes to understand what happened and see what legal aspects we have i tell clients i'd be like look now now it's time for me to put on my attorney hat look at the laws take your facts and see is there some type of combination of the laws and your facts that will establish a good enough foundation for us to file a lawsuit and file that complaint and argue through motions and go through the discovery and depositions etc to get an outcome that is 
reasonable under the law as well as reasonable for you as a client so it's it's a really hard balance especially because the at will so now getting into the practice realm of things i have to tell a client in alabama several states have an at will law where essentially an employer can fire you for a good reason a bad reason or no reason and that's just the nitty-gritty hard truth of it and it sucks uh, laws aren't perfect there's never going to be a perfect law Sometimes there's great facts and there's still not a great law. It's, it, it's a tough, it's a tough balance as a lawyer, especially, you know, in the employment realm. So really any law, any area of law, it can be difficult. It definitely can be difficult. So day-to-day -day life consists of a lot of client calls, witness calls, um, discoveries, huge. I feel like for a majority of attorneys where you're going back and forth. So essentially discovery is transfer, transferring information from one party to the next. So think about it, companies and corporations, I'm the, I am said I'm on the client side, companies and corporations, they have the HR documents, they have the personnel files, they have a ton of information in the employee handbook a lot of times when our clients don't. So we're having to ask for those documents through various means of the litigation process, such as various documents, such as requests for productions, requests for answers, just a lot of different motions that go back and forth, even just as basic as the, co the complaint and the answer. But discovery is really where like the back and forth really happens. So rule 37 letter, you're asking for specific documents that they may not have produced or specific answers that they may not have given or just a lot of different things. Also with that, we do a lot of reviewing documents. So reviewing whether it's sometimes it's medical records that dips into some other stuff. But a lot of times it's going through their emails, our clients emails or other people that are involved in emails talking to a lot of witnesses, getting witness statements, them sending over documents, reviewing those documents, reviewing the employment contract, reviewing the sales agreement, depending on what area of law or what area of employment we're talking about. Because think about it, there's so many different types of employees. So that adds another layer of understanding as an employment lawyer. You need to be aware of, okay, what are the laws regarding sales employees, what are the laws regarding um, maintenance employees, railroad employees, etc state employees, government employees, a lot of different layers to this. So it can definitely get complicated. Also, like I said, laws are constantly changing with the sexual orientation thing. That's new, new area that we can now expand on and now prohibits discrimination that it used to not be that way. So there were clients that we had to say, hey, no, that's, there's no law that helps you there. Now it is. So get, being adjustable and adaptable to that. Also, just kind of like a step-by-step -step thing about employment law and just the step process. So there's the discrimin discriminatory act, harassment, etc. Sometimes there's a termination. Then the next would be, this is when usually people hire a lawyer when they get fired or when something dramatic happens over and over. It just kind of depends. And there's the fact finding phase. Like I was saying, as a lawyer, I have to put on my lawyer hat and see what are the facts you're giving me. Is, are there laws that are going to help us come to a reasonable settlement, reasonable uh, judgment at the end of trial etc we have to kind of just see what's out there and what will work for this client fact specific then there's the pre-litigation pre so that's the eeoc stuff then sometimes it's a mediation in there oh then there's the filing of the complaint then there's the motions like i said discovery written discovery this depositions which is basically like vocal discovery or video discovery now since everything's going on there's a lot of things that are happening virtually so that's an adjustment getting the client adjusted with that setting up a lot of client meetings in person as well as on the phone keeping them up to date but not too up to date because sometimes there's just no updates like i said the eeoc they have 180 days that's six months there's really no need to call the client every day yes keep them informed don't be afraid to call your lawyer if you're just want to update but don't overdo it understand as long as they're giving you the guidelines and they're keeping you up to date just trust that the process isn't moving but also keep them up to date if you're still at your place of employment something happens tell your lawyer if your boss tries to ask you some questions about the law or something that's going on tell your lawyer tell them to contact your lawyer don't speak to another lawyer outside of your lawyer things like that and there is this big thing called the summary judgment so this could make or break your case. Now, even before that, there's the motion to dismiss. So as a practicing, as an attorney, this is these are big things for us. So the motion to dismiss, if you lose that as a plaintiff's attorney, the case is done. That's it. Dismiss, bada bing, bada boom, unless it's like dismissed without prejudice, etc. Then there's the summary judgment, where this is the big thing, where they're saying, Your Honor, we have enough facts. I'm very generalizing, but we have enough facts where there's no need to go any further, no need to settle, no need to mediation, no need to trial. We can't come to a conclusion. Nothing is going on. Right now, we should win on the merits of the case that where it is right now. There's no need to even go to the trial. 
That's basically what summary judgment is saying. So as a plaintiff's attorney, this is a phase where it's like, okay, we need to fight through this. And this can be the stressful kind of wave, high wave when it comes to the busyness setting. So being an attorney, especially practicing, it comes in waves. So there's the waiting for the EEOC charge and then the 90 days you have to file a complaint and then it goes down and you're kind of waiting for the answer, which is like 10 to 15 days, 10 to 14 days, I believe. Civil procedure, okay? <laughs> and then there's the motion to dismiss that's kind of busy and then you're waiting for the um, order on that and then you get the positive. So then you're waiting for discovery phase is really, really, really chaotic and busy. And then there may be some mediation settlement discussions going on there. Then you get down again and then there's the summer judgment. And then you're just like, Really, 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 really busy, busy, busy doing research and all this stuff. So there's, it definitely comes in waves. And after some, summary judgment, you may try to mediate again, come up with a settlement. If you can't, then there's a trial prep, trial, and then the judge, then there's an appeal if it goes a bad way. So that's just really general. I know I went over a lot of information, but if you have any other questions, leave me some comments down below. Again, not legal advice. Don't ask me like, oh, I'm at work and this is going. No, no, no. I'm talking about for prospective law students, prospective lawyers current law students, anybody that is interested in maybe practicing in this area, I would love to, you know, help you out if I can. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope that was helpful. Um, I'm not sure if I really did a good job of not talking about the law because I feel like you kind of got to give some background and that may be what is a little bit more helpful if you're like a law student trying to figure out if that's something you're interested in. I think employment litigation is super interesting. I really enjoy it. So definitely check it out if you're interested. Reach out to an employment lawyer, job shadow, intern. I'm not currently doing that right now. So don't ask me. I had some people ask me and I'm honored. Thank you so much. But right now I'm not offering that. But I love you guys. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget to thumbs up this video if you enjoyed and leave me some comments below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that notification bell so you're notified every single time I upload. Just because you click the subscribe button, y'all, it does not automatically notify you. I don't make the rules, y'all. YouTube does. <laughs> but yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Like I said, am I rambling? I probably am. And I will see you guys in my next video. Later!